Hey, I'm Mikko and in this video we are talking about the GIF animation tool in Procreate 4.3 and it was a really cool surprise added to the software and I would just really like doing these short loops because I'm not an animator but it just adds so much to the image when you see it moving and I think it's really cool on social media to have some kind of like um, a quick animation to grab the attention so once you get into it it's pretty easy to learn so this is gonna be quite detailed tutorial so I suggest that you do it step by step or just take it in chunks and also there are other animation features here that you might not need them all so I suggest that you start simple and then once you get a few of the animations done, you kind of like automatically come up with more ideas of like all kinds of cool things that you could do. And even something simple like this can look pretty nice when it just has that little bit of movement in it. When I was doing this animation, I kind of got this crazy idea that like, what if I do an entire illustration using only the colors? I have color picked from Procreate logo itself. So I did this palette and I shared that on my Instagram account and I think it was so challenging because the colors are so bright that you really need to like, kind of like have a good balance when you do it. After the illustration part was done, I already knew at this stage what I wanted the animation to be and that is the most essential thing for all of this is to have some kind of a plan before you start working because the way you construct the piece can speed up the way you construct the animation but if you don't have a plan everything might take a huge amount of time by hand later on so like have some kind of a plan of what you're gonna do with this. So for this illustration I wanted to use these kind of like swirly shapes and have the kind of full illustration revealed with the kind of like flowy lines as it goes along. I drew these like main lines in the illustration first and then I kind of like just constructed everything around that. And the way that GIF animations work in Procreate is that you will create layers and each layer is going to be one frame of that animation. So you're going to need a huge amount of layers at the end of this. So having proper layer management skills is essential. I have another video on this topic. So if you want to go and check that, that will <laughs> greatly reduce the amount of stress in all of this. So, I want to show you now how I constructed the image. The illustration is in this layer group here, and when I'm going to do the individual frames, this is going to be flattened on every single frame. And on top of it, I have this almost black layer. The way I constructed this animation is that I put this black layer on top of my illustration, and then I set the opacity to about 70, like this, so I can see what is underneath there. And then I took an eraser and I used the same chalk brush that I used to construct the entire illustration, just to keep a cohesive look in it. And for the first frame, I used just black. And for the second frame, I added a really tiny hole to this image. So now that I have the eraser tool selected, I'm just going to add a little dot here. It can be really tiny. So this is where it all starts. And now this is the process that I'm going to repeat for every single frame. And now I'm going to duplicate it. And this is really important. Go back to the previous layer and set the opacity back to 100. Otherwise, you're gonna get a flicker in the middle of this animation and you're gonna have so many layers at the end of this that it's just really important to have a proper workflow that you always do this step before you move on to the next one. And now we're gonna, back to the, gonna go back to the copy of that layer. And here we already have that tiny hole that shows the yellow around it. So, the way this whole animation process is going to work for this 
is I'm just gonna erase a little bit more along this kind of movement of the image. It doesn't have to be much because the second frame is gonna come really quickly in the animation. So this isn't a lot of time that the animation is gonna take. And then repeat the process. Duplicate, go back to the previous layer and set that opacity to 100 and disable it. Go back to the new layer that you created with a bigger hole in it and then continue erasing along the shape path. And this way I created 30 layers which reveals the entire illustration and now we're only kind of like at halfway point of this. So now when you have done the full reveal with the kind of progressive uh, layers that have increasing holes in them, you go into the original flattened layer, this illustration here, and you're gonna duplicate it so many times that it's gonna be under every single of these black layers. This is kind of time-consuming work, but it's kind of fun. And you're gonna do this for every single layer. And then when I had this done for 30 layers, which is, which is the full length of the animation, to one direction, I went back and for every single pair of these I will merge them, the black layer above, I will merge that with the illustration below. And for this it's very important that your black layers have 100% opacity. So after you merge all of these layers down into pairs of two, you will have 30 frames showing the entire length of the animation. Okay, and in the end we will have a progression that looks like this. That's a lot of frames and as you can see it slowly reveals itself. Now when you have the full frames that show the reveal, you can go to tools and share layers and then animated GIF. I think I said GIF earlier and I'm sure a lot of people feel very strongly about this, but I'm sorry. I'm just human, let's call it GIF from now on. I know that the creator of GIF said that like this debate should be over, everybody should call, pronounce it GIF from now on, so I'm sorry everybody. So, animated GIF, when, and you don't have to create this animation at this button press, you can use this also to preview it. So as you see it from here, it shows what the frames look like when they're played. And also it lets you set frames per second, which is basically the speed of this animation. And I'm gonna put this away now. And when I said that I had done like half of the animation, it shows now the first frames are black. So I wanted both ends to have kind of repeat frames. So there's some time that it shows the full illustration and then there is some time that it shows the blackness so that it has more of a rhythm and it's not just like blinking on and off all the time. And now that you have all of the layers, I would recommend to do this kind of like uh, contracting part of the animation is to name every single layer with a number. And I have numbered every single one of these layers. And after this is done, I went to every single layer and then I duplicate it. One duplication, two duplication, and then I move it back so that every frame kind of follows the numerical order backwards into 30. And this is gonna take some time again, but it's kind of uh, relatively fast when you kind of duplicate all the animation that you have already done. And this will create the simple version of this animation. But if you want to take it further and get fancy with it, I'm gonna show you how I did these like additional swooshes and color explosions too. So this is when you want to get like really obsessed with what you're doing and I did <laughs> because I'm obsessed and 
I added these in this kind of like growing phase so that these additional color splashes go into both sections. For these kind of like swooshes that you see in the animation, I created an additional layer and this is not part of the animation, but it's just like a plan so I know the flow of the sparks where they are going and I drew them just like as an outward going flowy lines that vaguely follow the shapes of this animation. And then I kind of vaguely decided that I'm gonna do 10 frames of this. So it's gonna be right in the middle of the color explosion. And for that, I added by hand numbers. So I added numbers, just one, 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 one. And I went over this, the entire lines. So you can do two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, whoop, nine, ten. I can count. Okay, and the indicators I'm going to use as a guideline for when I'm doing the color dots is that every number is gonna be a stopping point for that frame and for that spark. So I'm gonna now quickly go over these two. And they don't all have to go to 10. You can pick whatever length you feel comfortable with. It can be just like three frames is just like a small flash and five to six frames is a longer sweep. And this guideline won't be used in the animation. I'm gonna create uh, more layers underneath here. The way I construct these color swooshes here is that I do the first frame and then I go to the second frame in these empty layers. And this is quite quick process to do. And for the moment to look fluid, I suggest kind of like tapering out the line. I don't have to close all the layers and see it myself. It's it goes over so quickly that I only need to suggest the movement here. Six. You can see this is going really quickly. Seven and eight. And now I, when I have all the layers for this like additional color swoosh, I turn off that uh, guide layer and then I drag these um, layers to the animation. So let's say that I'm gonna start it from here, from frame 12, and then I just grab them in order. So every one of these layers is gonna be merged with the layer below, and that is gonna add that additional movement to that animation. And this is gonna help it look a bit more lively. And then when I have all the layers in place, I go back and I do this like two finger pinch and that is a faster way to merge layers. Just make sure that you're merging the color splash on a transparent layer with the full illustration below and not a full illustration on top of a color splash because that will delete your work. And just quickly squeezing these eight splashes in and for preview I need to delete this and then I go back to the tool and animated GIF and now we can see that the blue swoosh is going around in this animation and that looks pretty good to me. I think this small scale preview is enough for me but if you want you can save it in your gallery and look at it in full screen. And you can add as many of these tricks as you like and repeat the process. It doesn't take that much time once you get a hang of it to add like little small color splashes. And that's how you make animated GIFs. 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 
Anyway, I hope to see all of your animated GIFs and if you have any questions about this whole thing, write down in the comments below or if you find this helpful, I would like to know since this was at least for me really fun to do. Okay, thank you for watching this video. I'm Mikko and I'll see you in the next one. Go and make some really cool animations. Bye!